see the show, a show about people, people you know. And some do the not. This is the show, the show of my people, giving and sharing and caring a lot. This is the show of our future in Thailand, and hope and charity too. This is the show of our beautiful, wonderful people like you. A strange thing happened. The crowns belonging to the queen and prince disappeared right off their heads. And the king's crown floated through the air till finally it came to rest on Marvin's head. And a wondrous change came over the kingdom. Oh, look, it's the sun, the oh. sun, oh, the sun. Oh. Hey, 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 come on, you don't have to do that. Get up, Prince. You too, Queenie. All you have to do is to enjoy the warmth and light of the sun with me. Uh, and, and with him. Uh... And the sunshine of love came to the little kingdom and stayed in their hearts forever and ever. When one of us is gone, Then remembering will have to do Our memories alone will get us through Think about the days of me and you You and me against the world I'm Stan Mooneyham on board World Vision's Operation Sea Sweep here in the South China Sea. And I want to tell you a story. It's a story of extraordinary courage, of danger, of heartbreak. When Southeast Asia fell to the communists in 1975, there were thousands of families who, prizing freedom above everything else, put the most precious cargo they had, their wives and children, 
into frail fishing boats and set sail on these open seas for anywhere. They've been fleeing in numbers of up to 5,000 every month. There are confirmed reports of vessels being seized by pirates, the women raped, and the men thrown overboard. Most of the boats are unseaworthy and simply sink with the first storm. Right now, it is estimated that there are from five to 10,000 people adrift in these waters with no guarantee of a safe landing anywhere. This special report is about these boats, the people in them, and our response to this very real human tragedy. I've been investigating this problem on three continents for six months. And the thing that has distressed and disturbed me is that for the most part, the international bureaucrats and the governments of the world treat this problem as if it didn't exist and they wish it would go away. To finally see those faces, to know we're close enough to help, The excitement aboard our ship was electric. The captain comes on board and Bert gets right to the point of meeting their needs. The United States, yeah, yeah. who have come out here to help refugees, okay? Right. We will give you fuel and water and food. If you have anybody aboard that is sick, very sick. The captain has a charge up in He tells them that because of regulations, we can only allow the captain and those who need medical attention to come aboard. Somewhere out of the staccato of hurried questions and answers, a very human, personal drama is revealed. It's a story we thought we were prepared to hear, but somehow it's different now that we can see and touch those suffering. But uh, we only want to go to the liberty nation. To what? To the liberty. Any country where they have liberty. Not communist. Not communist. Yeah. Okay. I know how Bert felt. A few days before, I had asked him about helping the people and then having to abandon them to the sea. His voice tightened. It's very difficult. Very difficult, particularly the children. I would much prefer to pick them up. Yeah. As I felt this kinship. I couldn't help but think of the thousands of others still drifting on these waters and how much we need you to help us rescue them. As you watch this report, our ship is out there plying these waters, searching them out. We need you to be a part of this mission of mercy. In fact, we can't continue without you. That's the reason for the phone number on your screen. It's your personal lifeline to one of these people, one of these families. A gift of $35 can provide a boat pack, a means of survival for one family for one week. And we need many continuing gifts of $10 a month to keep our mercy ship on these waters. Whether your gift is $15 or $1,500, large or small, some family on the South China Sea needs the help you can provide right now. Pick up your phone. The number is toll free. Call now. The next 60 minutes will bring you face to face with a human crisis that has been hidden too long. Where, where's the mother? At home, this kid would be in an oxygen tent. 
children who get measles and are malnourished, they, uh, they just, they die. Crisis in the Horn of Africa, presented by World Vision. With hosts Stan Mooneyham and Carol Lawrence. And with special guests Dale Evans, Dean Jones, and Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. It's called the Crescent of Crisis an area that has placed the entire world on alert. To the north, Russia. To the west, Israel and the Arab nations. To the south, the vast resources of Africa. Here the superpowers battle for their own spheres of influence, with oil being the prize. At the southern tip of the crescent is the Horn of Africa. The two principal countries that make up the Horn are Somalia and Ethiopia. Ethiopia is an ancient land. The Old Testament records the Queen of Sheba traveling all the way from Ethiopia to visit King Solomon. Ethiopia has a Christian tradition. Somalia is Muslim. But this is not a religious war. This conflict is over this sprawling, barren piece of wasteland known as the Agadan Desert. And here is the grass that gets crushed. The simple people. And this is why we come to you tonight to help you hear the voices of those who are not being heard. They are the forgotten of our world. And I invite you, during this next hour, to listen to them. Welcome to this very important hour. I had the privilege of surveying the many crisis points in the Horn of Africa with tonight's special guest, a woman of great talent and compassion. May I introduce Miss Carol Lawrence? Thank you, Stan. Time has run out. There's no more time left for the child in Somalia, the infant in Ethiopia, the newborn baby in Uganda. But you can turn the hourglass around. With your dollars and your prayers and your assistance, you can turn the hourglass around so that others in similar circumstances will have the gift of hope. In the time it takes you to pick up a phone and call, Lives are at stake. Don't let them go. It's all a matter of time. As long as I live, I don't think I'll ever be able to forget Maria and the terrible choice she had to make as to which of her sons would live or die. I know that my sons are only 15 months apart and were constantly taken for twins. I only thank God that I never had to face the agonizing choice Maria did. But right now, you have a choice to make, too. To help or to turn aside. To say yes or no. Make the right choice. Please call now. They were gathering for one reason. They were desperate for food. Where, where's the mother? Mother. Is this the mother? How, how old is the baby? Does she know when the baby was born? Huh? What would you say, a few months old? Maybe a year old? Three years? Three years old? That baby doesn't weigh eight pounds, six pounds, seven pounds. But that little leg, just look at that. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, dear little guy. In the whole country, there are five million people affected by drought and severe hunger. Again, months ago, we budgeted $35,000 for specific relief projects in Ethiopia. But what I saw during those days changed our plans. You can't stand there and see so much need without doing something. So we've just decided on a series of emergency programs in Ethiopia that are going to cost over $3 million this year. We've got a staff of over 100 people working in cooperation with the government and through the churches in a coordinated, life-saving effort. As an immediate measure, we've sent grain, cooking oil, powdered milk, clothing, blankets, and medical supplies. If ever a people needed a faithful, consistently compassionate response, it is these beautiful, determined people of Bume. 
Your monthly gift of $14 or even more over this next year is needed now. I believe Amila spoke for the hungry, the dispossessed, everywhere. As uncomfortable as I was, I couldn't turn away. I had to hear her and try to respond. Uh, there's no butter around this area. There is no milk or dry skim milk around this area. Every morning uh, we wake up, we don't eat any breakfast, and uh, we walk uh, with empty stomach up to this relief uh, center, and we don't get anything. And we, when we saw the plane uh, coming this morning, we thought that there were some relief items. Unfortunately, there, were, uh, there was nothing. We only saw you. I'm very touched by what she tells me. Uh, yeah, yeah, submitting. It's an agreement. It's okay. No, let her, let her speak. Yes. She speaks the truth, and I need to hear the truth. And the whole needs to hear the truth. We will not forget. I tried to tell Amila that we would be sending food, but she was skeptical. She'd heard empty promises before. The only thing is, I don't want you to forget what you told us. I want you to prove it in action as soon as you reach Arbaminch or as soon as you reach Adzaba. And I promise in the name of God that as quickly as we can get a plane here with food, there will be food here. I saw her standing over to the side of the crowd, then coming to get a portion of maize for her family. Later, she made a special point to thank me in the traditional Bume fashion. Amila and I had come full circle. She had placed her trust in the word of a stranger. And because of the faithfulness of God and people like you, I was able to honor her trust. The following 60 minutes can be your personal adventure of caring and hope. With Gary Collins and Marianne Mobley visiting Ethiopia and Cambodia with special guests Susan Howard, Leslie Uggams, and Dennis Weaver. Tonight, World Vision presents Children Running Out of Time. And now, Gary Collins and Marianne Mobley. Welcome to this hour about children. We're aboard a World Vision relief plane. We're flying toward the Gondar region of Ethiopia. Clear on the left side. Don Craig, our MAF pilot, told me we're carrying a little over two tons of grain, food supplements, and medical supplies. Well, we're presently flying to Zuai Hamoz at 46 miles from Gondar. Uh, there's 2,000 people living in the camp, another 38,000 in the area that we're uh, dropping grain to. Uh, you can see how the ground has been scorched Every minute counts, every flight means lives saved. But what I saw next, I just wasn't prepared for. Just a few yards from the airstrip, a World Vision medical team had set up this clinic and feeding center. Hundreds come here every morning needing help. They need help for severe malnutrition, malaria, parasites, tuberculosis, pneumonia, the list goes on and on. Many of them have walked up to four days without food, carrying children on their backs. But I do know this. There wouldn't be a chance in the world for Fontania or any of the other children here if it weren't for that airplane and its precious cargo and you. Right now, hundreds are still arriving at this outpost of survival. They come hungry, weary, heart sick, many dying. Their only hope is your compassion, your willingness to walk with them in their suffering and simply say, I care. And for a baby like Fontai, those words can mean life itself. Call right now. Right now, all over the world, World Vision is helping save the lives and futures of children. We want to say yes to everyone who comes to us, but our resources are stretched to the absolute limit. If these life-saving efforts are going to continue, we must reach out to these children now. That's the reason for this program. It will be shown across the nation. And our goal within the next 50 minutes 
is to touch the lives of 750,000 children. It will take $4 million, and it can be done if you and hundreds like you will call right now. When you call to help this effort, you'll become a child care partner, helping provide some child with things like emergency food, medical care, shelter, education, and Christian hope. In a matter of days, you'll receive this picture folder with interesting facts about the country and way of life of a child like you'll be helping in Africa, Asia, or Latin America. And that is why I hold the work of World Vision International in such high regard. They believe in responding to the total needs of the whole human person. I'm glad that over the years, our 700 Club audience has had an opportunity to reach out to a hungry world through World Vision. It has been my privilege to be involved in the ministry of World Vision since its founding 33 years ago. The problems of poverty and despair are not just big city problems, they're world problems. And I'm so thankful that there are organizations like World Vision, which not only open our eyes to a needy world, but give us a chance to share a little of what we have with those who have absolutely nothing. You know, they used to say that time heals things, but that ain't really true. Time can kill things, too, like little babies whose time is running out. And that's why I do this, to slow up time just a little bit, give them a chance. Now, you don't have to go out and break your neck trying to help. Just do what you can, that's all. And you may never see the kids that you're helping, but believe me, there's no greater satisfaction on the face of the earth. No, sir. The actual flying itself is only part of the ministry for me. Um, having answered a call of the Lord on my life to be here, um, that's, that's really what sustains me when the, when the going gets tough. And uh, I'm not here for my own comfort. I'm not here for the money. Um, I'm here to serve the Lord, and I'm here to, to help these people. I'm here because I know this is exactly where God wants me. Jesus told us not only to go out and, and heal spiritually and emotionally, but physically. And he did it himself. And I see that this is what World Vision is attempting to do. You know, Marianne, when I look at the need, the great need over such a vast area, I wonder sometimes if God's hands are big enough for it all. But then he works through our hands, doesn't he? And hands like those of Atu Duferas and all of the others here. And he works through your hands and he blesses those hands. We ask you to join us, to use your hands to reach across the miles to provide food, medical aid, and hope. That cup of cool water that Jesus talked about. Hello, I'm Edwin Newman. Recent news reports have begun to lift the curtain on perhaps the greatest human need crisis of our time. A silent plague of death is sweeping across vast areas of Africa. Drought and famine threaten the lives of 150 million people. The United Nations estimates that 20 million people are in danger of immediate starvation. At this moment, Africa is a continent in crisis. The crisis and the human heartache are the focus of the next 60 minutes. Africa, continent in crisis. Presented by World Vision, with hosts Gary Collins and Marianne Mobley. Joining us for this important hour, Debbie Allen, LeVar Burton, Gordon Jump, and former NBC News correspondent Edwin Newman. Right now, you have the power to reach out and help touch the life and future of one of those children. You can do it with a call and a gift of $16 a month. When you call, you'll become an Africa Lifeline partner. Each month, you'll receive a story and picture of a child that you're helping. You'll also receive this Africa Lifeline poster on which each picture can be placed. The time is so short for so many children. Don't wait with your $16 a month pledge. Pick up your phone and call. For the people of Tet, every flight of this DC-6 means lives saved. Today, 150 million Africans are threatened by famine. 
20 million face immediate starvation. Most of them are children. I will never, never forget the pathetic sight of little Nana searching in the ground for that last kernel of corn. But she represents so many other children who are hungry and sick and close to death. Now, tomorrow I'm going to watch them load her up and take off again. And I'll get that feeling I got those years ago when I stood in the wheat field and watched those silver birds flying overhead. Only this time she's going to be a white bird. Yeah, a dove of peace, sort of. Bringing hope to thousands upon thousands of starving people. Now, you'll excuse an old grease monkey getting poetic like that, but Underneath these greasy overalls, I'm just as emotional as the next guy, and I get to feeling a real bond with those people out there who are counting on me to keep things going. And, you know, when they say they're counting on you, too. Now, you don't let them down, okay? <laughs> keep them flying. Just days ago, in the mountains near Armero, Colombia, a volcano that has not erupted in 400 years came to life overnight. In the middle of the night, before anyone could escape, an estimated 20,000 people were buried alive. The following is an on-site World Vision report on what has become one of the worst natural disasters in modern times. Emergency report, Colombia's tragedy. Presented by World Vision. In Colombia is World Vision's Executive Vice President, Bill Cleaver. I've just arrived here on the outskirts of our meadow, and I'm overwhelmed by what I see. You can see the destruction. There's nothing left of the village. This huge wall of mud came down from the volcano and completely wiped out the town of our meadow of 20,000 people. As I walked here along the edge of the mud, I could imagine the little ranch that used to be here was a cotton ranch. Those people have lost everything. I suppose when I first got here, one of the things that hurt me the most was to look out. And on top of the mud, I could see off in the distance the little body of a child, almost in a frozen position, having lost its life. These were the scenes that were sent around the world short days ago. Desperate attempts to rescue the living from among 20,000 people who were buried alive. The effects of a volcanic eruption in a town in Colombia brought about what could be one of the greatest natural disasters of modern times. Death came with the force of a huge explosion. Three-story concrete buildings were leveled in a moment. Survivors said the whole world began to scream. Right now, as survivors try to recover, World Vision staff in Colombia is trying desperately to meet emergency needs. World Vision is an international Christian relief and development agency that is committed to meeting just such crises. This crisis still continues. Thousands stand in desperate need of help. The survivors of Colombia's tragedy need your help now. Your call and gift of $25 or more can help supply one family, one orphan child, one mother who has lost her children with emergency food, blankets, medical care, and temporary shelter. Gifts of $50 or $100 can do even more. If we act now, lives can be saved. We cannot wait. Your help is urgently needed. Please call the toll-free number on your screen. If you're not near a phone, you can write to this address. Columbia Relief, World Vision, Pasadena, California, 91109. Please help bring hope to a family, to a child of Columbia's tragedy. We were running, but trees were in the way. What does she think happened to her niece? Tú podrías decirnos qué crees que pasó con tu sobrina? My niece, 
I believe she died. No one was there to help them. My family was in different barrios of our meadow. Perhaps they could have been rescued. Most of the dead were children, children and old people. While at the hospital, this man named Jose came with a list searching for missing relatives. Happily, he found a niece. He fears all the rest of his family are gone. Jose told me that during that horrible night when the waves of mud thundered through our meadow, all 20 of his family were separated. He was rescued while sinking in mud up to his waist. He lost everything. I told Jose that we would do everything we could to help him. The tenderness of his saying goodbye to a very courageous little niece was unforgettable. We have a commitment here in World Vision to reach out to Jose for these next days and weeks, but there are thousands of others just like him. You are the link to us being able to do that for these people here in Colombia. They are totally dependent on us, and we are totally dependent on you. Won't you go to your phone right now and make that pledge of $25, $50, $75? Whatever you do will make a real difference in Jose's life and the lives of thousands of others here in Colombia. change the life of one child forever to share your love that rescues. Now, here are your hosts for this important special, Sarah Purcell and Michael Gross. Welcome, friends, to a special program full of compassion for children. Love that rescues. You'll be helping provide the kind of loving care that can change a child's life forever. What I've seen in the last week here in Mali and just the last two days here in this hospital in Gao has touched me and I hope that it will touch you too and that you will go to the phone and make that call. Help us rescue one of these children now. Michael, how many children are still without sponsors? Okay, Sarah, we began with 4,000 picture folders in the studio, on our walls all across the studio. Children who still need sponsors as of this moment are 2,129, meaning 1,871 children have been rescued. We're halfway there. We have all become painfully aware of the plight of millions of children in our world who suffer because of poverty, hunger, and disease. Fortunately, through World Vision Child Sponsorship, we can reach out to these children, not only with emergency aid, but also with long-term continued care. For Adriana, the door to freedom and a happier life is open, thanks to a very special family back home that cares enough to sponsor her month by month. Children like Adriana deserve the kind of love that Jesus shared in every word and deed. Each of us can help put his love into action by helping just one boy or girl. You can send a little bit of love. You can take time to do something for someone else. You can send a few dollars a month to take care of some child somewhere in this world who needs that little bit of love. God bless all of you, and keep on rescuing these children with your love. Bless Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank all of you. like to be when you grow up? 
Engineer. Engineer. An engineer. That's wonderful. Hey, good job. A teacher. A teacher. There you go, professor. Licenciada. To have a degree. Great. Look at this. You got your work cut out for you here. Lo que quiero preguntarle es que cuando ustedes pueden venir a ayudarle al profesor a arreglar la escuela. When are you coming? When are you able to come and help the teacher build the school? <laughs> well, I may not be able to do it myself, but maybe we can make that happen somehow. Ella no puede hacerlo ella misma, pero ella va a ayudar para que otros lo hagan. That's important to you? Eso es importante para ti. Yeah. It's very hard to see those little kids in that little classroom, some of them with distended bellies from parasites, and yet they still had a dream. But those dreams can go so unfulfilled so easily. I mean, they're hanging by a thread. And when you see all those eager faces and you think that they might not survive, that's very hard. So, yeah, I know it might be hard for people seeing these pictures, but I, and I, and I remember watching pictures of World Vision projects and, and others on television and, and seeing poverty that was just impossible to watch. I'd either turn the television off or um, turn away or, or throw up my hands and say, it's too big, it's too monumental. I can't do anything about this. Well, that's not true. Yes, you can change things. And if you don't, if you don't, then there truly is no hope. And I can't live with that. Well, I'm going with Reina now to meet her little sister, whose name is Yasenia. And she's four years old. Reina was telling me that she found a, a teddy bear, some sort, for her sister yesterday. and. Hello. Hello. How are you? Oh, and this is your bear here. Let me pick you up, huh? Can I pick you up? Yeah, what a sweet little girl. Isn't it amazing how, how little kids can just adapt to the horrors of a place like this and, and smile and have little toys? And... When I picked up the ring, this little sister who's four years old and uh, it just came right to my heart because I have a little four-year-old boy who's about the same size and about the same weight and, and suddenly the commonness of that it's that weight and that feel of that little girl who's done nothing but smile since we got here this morning and I think that's what really surged into me. This baby's three years old. She weighs six kilograms. She's extremely malnourished. Her skin is very loose. Her legs. I know, baby. This child has scabies. He's already lost a fingernail. This little girl here has vitamin A deficiency so badly that she has lost the sight in her left eye. These moms, these families are so in need. And sometimes we wonder what on earth can we do? What can we possibly do to change the world? I'm just one person. We can't turn away from the cries of children like this. The more they cry, the more they need our help. If Jesus were here, what would he do? I know that he would take them each one by one into his arms. We have a right, a responsibility, an obligation, a challenge, a privilege to help these children.